is the same thing. You just get an inexpensive Tupperware container. And then you would also wrap that in aluminum foil until it's completely covered. And then once it's completely covered nicely, then you could put your octopus on there for the cake. And you can also put little baby socks on the octopus if you're doing a baby shower. It would make a nice baby shower gift. For this project, you're going to need your J or 6 millimeter crochet hook and also a tapestry needle and a pair of scissors. The yarn that I used is Lion Brand's Pounds of Lion Brand Yarns, Pound of Love. And this color is turquoise. The other color yarn that I'm using is the Pound of Love, and this one is antique white. It's just a beautiful off-white beige like color. This is Red Heart Super Saver black yarn for the eyes and Karen Simply Soft white yarn for the eyes. I used a soft baby soft pink Bernat type yarn for the cheeks. Now I also use the Copper Wire by Cousin and it's the 20 gauge I'm also caliber. using this decorative trim. It's called decorative trim and this size is two-fifths of an inch. So now you can see how it looks. The bottom rim helps to hold the bottom shape and then the top rim helps to hold the top shape. And then the lid sits nicely on top. And you can place your toilet paper inside and then the lid will just sit right on top of it. And you can leave it like this, or if you want, you can put flowers onto the top. And another design is you can sew the octopus right onto the top of it. You're going to start with the magic circle. So you're going to take your yarn and just drape it across your four middle fingers and use your thumb to stabilize. And then just wrap it around your two middle fingers twice and hold it with your pinky and your thumb and I'm still using my J or six millimeter crochet hook and you're going to bring up a loop and yarn over turn the hook upside down and go through that loop for your slip knot and now you're going to do six single crochet into the magic circle And then you're going to take your forefinger and thumb and just hold it at the base of the six single crochet. And then, of course, you have the two loops on the other side of the magic circle. Just pull on one. And, then, and if it doesn't close, just let go and pull on the other one. But this one's closing. And then take your loose yarn in and pull on that. And you don't have to pull too tightly on it yet. We can close it more later. Now you're going to do two single crochet into every stitch around. So I'm going to go into that first stitch and do two single crochet. So it's one, two, and then go ahead and finish doing two single crochet into every stitch for a total of 12 and then come back. Now you're just going to take your yarn marker and place it right where you left off and we're going to do an increase round. So you're going to go into the next stitch over and you're just going to do a single crochet and then in the second stitch you're going to do two single crochet and you're just going to repeat that pattern all the way around back to the yarn marker. Okay, So now you're going to take and move your yarn marker up to where you left off and now you're just going to work into the back loop only. So you go into the middle of the next stitch into the back loop only 
And you're going to bring up a loop, two loops on the hook, yarn over and go through both for a single crochet, and then in the next stitch you go down the center into the back loop only, and another single crochet. You're going to do that all the way around back to the yarn marker. Okay, then you take your yarn marker and move it up. And now you're going to do one single crochet into the next stitch under both loops. So go under both loops and do a single crochet. And then you're going to do one single crochet into every stitch all the way around back to the yarn marker. Okay, now we're going to go ahead and move the yarn marker up to where we left off. And we're going to do a slip stitch into the next stitch over. So go ahead and go into the next stitch over, yarn over, and bring the yarn through both loops on your hook for a slip stitch. Then you can go ahead and chain three. One, two, three. And now we're going to do an increase round. Go ahead and take your yarn marker and move it. You actually don't need your yarn marker, but if you want it, you can just put it right where you left off. And now we're going to do two double crochet into the next stitch. And we're going to repeat that pattern all the way around back to the first double crochet. So one double crochet into the next stitch, and then two double crochet into the second stitch. And then repeat that pattern all the way around back to the beginning, and then come back. And then you go ahead and do a slip stitch into that first stitch, the top stitch of the first stitch. Yarn over and bring the yarn through both loops on your hook. Then you can go ahead and chain three. One, two, three. Now you want to turn your work so that the wrong side is facing you. You can pull on your loose yarn end too to close the magic circle up. And the reason why we're facing the wrong side toward us is because I'm going to add beads. You don't have to add beads if you don't want to, but if you do, then go ahead and turn the work so that the wrong side is facing you. And now you're going to chain one and then bring a bead up and place it right next to the hook and then do another chain one and then do a double crochet in the same stitch. We're doing a V-stitch with a bead in the center. So now you're going to skip a stitch. Actually, we're not going to skip a stitch. We're going to do V-stitches in every stitch around. So go ahead and yarn over, go into the next stitch, bring up a loop, three loops on the hook, yarn over and go through two, Yarn over and go through two, and then chain one, and then bring a bead forward on the yarn, and then you're going to chain one again, and then you're going to do another double crochet into the same stitch. You're going to repeat that pattern all the way around back to the beginning. When you reach the beginning, you're going to go ahead and just do a slip stitch into that top stitch of the first double crochet. Just yarn over and bring the yarn through both loops on your hook for a slip stitch. And then you're going to finish off, yarn over and bring enough yarn through to bury into your work. and then just take and bury all of your loose yarn ends. Now you're going to take your copper wire and you're just going to measure it around the circle until you get the size that you need and then once you have the size that you need for the parasol you're just going to take and cut a little bit longer than the size of the circle. You just take the scissors and just cut that and then you just take and measure it again and then where it overlaps 
is where you're going to twist the copper wire together. So you're just going to twist it around and then just make sure that you have the right size for your circle. And now we're going to take and crochet the yarn around the copper wire. Now you're just going to take your yarn and tie a knot around the copper wire. And then you're going to take your crochet hook and you can bury the loose yarn end as you work, but you're going to take your crochet hook and go right into the center of the circle. You're going to bring up a loop and then you're going to do a chain one and then you're going to go into the circle again, bring up a loop. Now you have two loops on your hook. You're going to yarn over and go through both for a single crochet. And you're going to keep doing a single crochet all the way around the circle until the copper wire is completely covered and then come back. To make the bottom, we're going to start with the magic circle again. So you just drape the yarn across your four middle fingers, use your thumb to stabilize, and then wrap the yarn around your two middle fingers twice and hold it in place with your pinky and your thumb. And I'm still using my J or six millimeter crochet hook. And you're just going to bring up a loop and then yarn over, turn the hook upside down and go through that loop for a slip knot. And now we're going to do six single crochet into the magic circle. So you bring up a loop, you have two loops on the hook, yarn over, turn the hook upside down and go through that both loops for a single crochet. And then you're going to do six single crochet into the magic circle. And then one more. Then you take your forefinger and thumb of your other hand and hold it at the base of the six single crochet. And then you have the two loops on the other side of the circle. Just pull on one. If it doesn't close, let go and pull on the other one. But this one's closing. And then take your loose yarn in and pull on that. And now you're going to do two single crochet into every stitch around for a total of 12. So you're going to go into that first stitch under both loops, bring up a loop, two loops on the hook, yarn over and go through both for a single crochet, and then two single crochet into every stitch all the way around for a total of 12, and then come back. Once the copper wire is completely covered, you can go ahead and do a slip stitch into that first single crochet that you created. Let me just go under both loops. And then just yarn over and bring the yarn through both loops on your hook for a slip stitch. And then you're going to finish off and bring enough yarn through to sew the, the copper wire around your parasol. So I'm just going to bring a lot of yarn through. Don't worry if you, um, you can also just use the yarn on the tapestry needle. You don't have to do the long yarn end for um, this part of it. You can always just cut off some more yarn if you need it, is what I'm trying to say. <laughs> so here I just cinched down the knot and then I'm going to take my tapestry needle and put it onto the long end that I left for sewing. Now you want to take your parasol and make sure you have the right side facing you and just place it right up against where you finished off and you're just going to take your tapestry needle and you're going to weave it through the stitch on the parasol and you're just going to sew the parasol onto the copper wire rim. So you just go ahead and sew your copper wire rim onto your parasol and just kind of cinch it to fit. 
And after you're finished sewing it on, come back and I'll show you what to do next. Now you're going to take your decorative trim and you're just going to measure the trim around the parasol. And you can get just a little bit extra. Not much. Just a little bit to overlap just to make sure you have enough to sew onto the parasol. And then you're going to take your tapestry needle and the same colored yarn and you can take and place the decorative trim along the rim of the parasol and you can take your tapestry needle and you can sew right along the center the decorative the decorative trim that I chose I can sew along the center but if you have a different trim that you're not able to do that then you can use just a regular sewing needle and thread and just take and um, sew your decorative trim on that way and you can see how it's going to look on mine so I wanted to show you a close-up of this decorative trim and you can see where I placed all of my stitches along it and I'm just going to show you where I placed some of the stitches so I just came up through one of the holes and then there's another second hole right next to it that I went down into and it just looks really pretty you can see how I sewed that on. Then I just overlap the last part of it and make my last stitch. And then I'm going to tie a knot on the back and then just bury my loose yarn ends. To make the bottom, we're going to start with the magic circle again. So you just drape the yarn across your four middle fingers, use your thumb to stabilize, and then wrap the yarn around your two middle fingers twice and hold it in place with your pinky and your thumb and I'm still using my J or six millimeter crochet hook and you're just going to bring up a loop and then yarn over turn the hook upside down and go through that loop for a slip knot and now we're going to do six single crochet into the magic circle so you bring up a loop you have two loops on the hook yarn over turn the hook upside down and go through that both loops for a single crochet and then you're going to do six single crochet into the magic circle And then one more. Then you take your forefinger and thumb of your other hand and hold it at the base of the six single crochet. And then you have the two loops on the other side of the circle. Just pull on one. If it doesn't close, let go and pull on the other one. But this one's closing. And then take your loose yarn in and pull on that. And now you're going to do two single crochet into every stitch around for a total of 12. So you're going to go into that first stitch under both loops, bring up a loop, two loops on the hook, yarn over and go through both for a single crochet, and then two single crochet into every stitch all the way around for a total of 12, and then come back. Now you can go ahead and close the center of the magic circle by turning over your work and just pulling on that loose yarn end snugly until it's closed. And now we're going to start doing our increase rounds. So go ahead and get your yarn marker and just place it right where you left off. And now you're going to do one single crochet into the next stitch. And then two single crochet into the second stitch. And repeat that pattern all the way around back to the yarn marker. Okay, and then go ahead and move your yarn marker up to where you left off. And then we're going to do another increase round. So you're going to do one single crochet into the next stitch, one single crochet into the second stitch, and then two single crochet into the third stitch, and repeat that pattern all the way around back to the yarn marker. Now we go ahead and take your yarn marker and move it up. We're going to do another increase round. 
and you're going to do one single crochet into the next three stitches and then in the fourth stitch you're going to do two single crochet in the same stitch and repeat that pattern all the way around back to the yarn marker. Now go ahead and move your yarn marker up to the next round and we're going to do another increase round. You're going to do one single crochet into the next five stitches and then in the sixth stitch you're going to do two single crochet in the same stitch and then repeat that pattern all the way around. And again go ahead and move your yarn marker up and now you're going to do one single crochet into the next six stitches and then two single crochet in the seventh stitch and then repeat that pattern all the way around. Now for another increase round go ahead and move your yarn marker up and you're going to do one single crochet into the next seven stitches and then in the eighth stitch you're going to do two single crochet and then repeat that pattern all the way around. Now we're going to go ahead and do a slip stitch into the next stitch over so go into the next stitch yarn over and bring the yarn through both loops on your hook for a slip stitch. And so if you're making the octopus you would make it the same way up to this point but then you would just start doing single crochet rounds. Now for the octopus you're going to want to do one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten rows and then we're going to sew on the eyes. So ten rows of one single crochet in every stitch and then I'm going to show you how to do the eyes. So you're going to make two of the black eyes and two of the cheeks. So I'm going to show you how to make the eyes with the pink color even though you're going to use your black yarn to make the eyes. I'm going to show you how with the pink because it shows be up better on the video. But you're going to take the pink color that you're using for the cheeks or if you're making the eyes you use the black yarn. You're going to do it the same way. Just take your yarn and drape it across your four fingers and use your thumb to stabilize and then wrap it around your two middle fingers and then hold it with your pinky and your thumb and I'm using my J or six millimeter crochet hook. Just go under those two loops, bring up a loop, yarn over, turn the hook side, upside down and go through that loop for a slip knot and then do six single crochet into the magic circle. That's two. three, four, five, and six. And then you take your forefinger and thumb and just hold at the base of those six single crochet and then you have those two loops on the opposite side. You're just going to pull on one of them to close. If it doesn't close you let go and pull on the other one. But this one is closing so I'm going to close that loosely then take your loose yarn in and pull on that. You don't have to pull it too tight yet, we'll close it more later. Now for the eyes, you're just going to take your hook and go through that first stitch. We're going to do a slip stitch. So you're just going to yarn over and pull the yarn through both loops for a slip stitch and then you're going to finish off. So you would just cut the yarn there. And then you just turn your work over and pull on that loose yarn in to close the center circle. So you're going to need two of those with the black yarn for the eyes. Now for the cheeks, let me go ahead and um, put this back to how we had it. So for the cheeks, what you're going to do is you're going to make it a little bit bigger. So in that first stitch, you're going to do two single crochet. So you're going to go into that first stitch, you're going to bring up a loop, two loops on the hook, yarn over and go through both for a single crochet and then you're going to do two single crochet 
and to every stitch around for a total of four and then you come back. After you finish two single crochet in every stitch for a total of 12, it should look like this and then you're going to go into your next stitch over and you're just going to do a slip stitch and then you're just going to finish off and bring enough yarn through to sew the cheek onto the face. And you can do that with the eyes too when you make them. So now I've shown you how to make the eyes. You're going to need two eyes and two cheeks. And then when you come back, I'm going to show you how to put the little white sliver on the eye. Now this is the left eye. So what I'm going to do, this is the long yarn end that I left for sewing. I'm just going to take my tapestry needle and go through the wrong side up to the right side and leave enough yarn on the back for tying a knot and then you're just going to go about a millimeter down at an angle and then you have the little white sliver and then you're going to do the same thing on the right eye and you're just going to do it on the outer part so on the left eye you went on the left side and then on the right eye you went on the right side. After you tie your knot on the back of the eye you just want to cut the loose yarn ends just to leave a little bit of a loose yarn end and the same thing with the center yarn that you had for the magic circle just make sure that the center of the magic circle is closed completely and then just cut that loose yarn end a small, leave a small amount of that loose yarn end and then your eye is ready to be sewn onto the octopus. First you just sew your eyes on with your tapestry needle and I went starting from the center of the magic circle one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine rows down and then I have one, two, three, four, five, six, seven stitches between the eyes and then once you've sewn the eyes on then you can take your tapestry needle and just sew the cheeks on. This is how the cheeks should look and you can see how I went about halfway down from the eye and only one row down on both sides mid-eye lined up mid-eye and then one row down. And now I'm going to do the mouth. So I take, I'm going to take my tapestry needle with some black yarn and I'm going to come up and I'm coming up about one, two, three, four, three. One, two, three rows down and then three stitches across. And make sure you leave enough in the back for tying your knot and then you're going to go down one row at an angle and then I'm going to go over two stitches and then back across for the bottom of the mouth and then I'm going to go up one row at an angle, one stitch over, and then back down to the bottom of the mouth to make a smile. And then I'm going to tie a knot on the inside, and then I'll show you how to finish stuff and finish the head. All right, so now you're just going to take your yarn marker and you're going to place it right where you left off. And we're going to do one single crochet into the next five stitches. One, two, three, four, 
five, and then you're going to do your decrease stitch. So you're going to go into the next stitch, bring up a loop, go into the next stitch, bring up a loop. You have three loops on your hook, yarn over, and then bring the yarn through all three loops for a decrease stitch. And you're going to repeat that pattern all the way around back to the yarn marker. Now go ahead and move your yarn marker up and we're going to do one single crochet into the next four stitches. One and this is the fourth stitch and now you're going to do your decrease stitch so go into the next stitch, bring up a loop, next stitch, bring up a loop, yarn over and go through all three for a decrease and then repeat that pattern all the way back to the yarn marker. Now you can see the pattern. I'm going to take the yarn marker, move it up, and now you're going to do one single crochet into the next three stitches. And then you're going to do your decrease and repeat that pattern all the way around back to the yarn marker. So we're going to, go to keep on continuing our decreases and at any time you can start to stuff the head with some pillow stuffing. I just use um, a cheap pillow, an inexpensive pillow to stuff my stuffed animals. Now to continue on with the decrease you're just going to do one single crochet into the next two stitches and then you're going to do your decrease. Now we're down to only one single crochet into the next stitch and then you do your decrease stitch and then repeat that pattern all the way around. So you can see I went ahead and stuffed mine so just make sure you stuff it well and then you can go ahead and just start doing decreases all the way around Careful you don't grab your stuffing in there. So go ahead and do your decrease stitches all the way around until it's almost closed and then I'll show you how to do a slip stitch to slip stitch it closed. Now when you get towards the end and you're almost closed you can do a slip stitch to get it to close so you can skip a stitch and go to the next stitch, just yarn over and bring the yarn through both loops on your hook for a slip stitch. And then you can just go around skipping stitches and just doing your slip stitch and then that will close it nicely. And then to finish off you just yarn over and pull enough yarn through to bury into your work. Just pull the knot snugly and then you have your cute octopus head. To bury the loose yarn end you would just take your tapestry needle go right in where you tied your knot and come out anywhere on the back and then just cut it and then you just buried your loose yarn end. Now for the octopus feet I'm using my lighter color, the beige color for the bottom portion of it so you're going to start with a magic circle. So just drape your yarn against your four fingers, use your thumb to stabilize, and then wrap it around your two middle fingers twice and hold in place with your pinky and your thumb. And then just take your crochet hook, go under those two loops, bring up a loop, yarn over, turn the hook upside down and go through that loop for your slip knot. And then you're going to do six single crochet into the magic circle. And then you're going to take your forefinger and thumb and hold it at the base of the sixth single crochet and then you're going to pull on one of the two yarn ends on the opposite side of the circle and if it doesn't close let go and pull on the other one and just close it loosely 
Then take your loose yarn in and pull on that. Now you're going to go into that first stitch and you're going to do two single crochet in the same stitch and you're going to do two single crochet into every stitch all the way around for a total of 12 and then come back. Now we want to close the center of the magic circle so just turn your work over and pull on the loose yarn strand to close it up and then take your yarn uh, marker or just a loose scrap of yarn and place it right where you left off and now you're going to do one single crochet into every stitch around so only one single crochet into every stitch back to the yarn marker and now we're going to change colors so take your crochet hook and go into the next stitch bring up a loop you have two loops on your hook now you're going to get your second color the same color as the octopus and then bring unless you want to do different colors that's fine <laughs> and then just yarn over for chain one and you're going to tie a knot go ahead and cut the previous color that you were using and then you can take and tie a knot and now you're going to do one single crochet into every stitch around. So go ahead and do one single crochet into every stitch around. So go ahead and finish doing one single crochet into every stitch for 18 rows. And then once you've finished 18 rows, you're going to do a slip stitch. So you take your crochet hook, go into the next stitch over. You're going to yarn over and bring the yarn through both loops on your hook and then you're going to finish off. So you're going to yarn over and you're going to pull enough yarn through the loop to sew the leg onto the octopus. So you're going to need eight of these. Go ahead and finish making eight of these and then I'll show you how to sew them onto the octopus. Now you're going to want to take and stuff the legs of the octopus and just make sure that you leave the last couple rows unstuffed because you're going to sew the leg to the octopus and I've already sewed the other seven onto the octopus and I left the one spot open and you can see how I had sewed it around the rim of the octopus and on the front you can see that I went <clears throat> excuse me one two three four rows down and that's the rim that I used for sewing the legs on the octopus so you want to arrange them evenly around and then I'm going to show you how I sew the last one on and you want to go ahead and take your tapestry needle and put it on the long end you left for sewing or just get the same colored yarn to sew it on and then you're going to place it onto the octopus and then you're just going to take your tapestry needle and just sew make sure that you get both sides the front and the back of the leg and then just sew it in place Once you've sewn it on, then you're just going to take your tapestry needle and go towards the center. And you're going to tie a knot. And I usually just go a couple times. And then you just take and go right where you had your knot, 
with your tapestry needle and go anywhere out of the center. And then just cut your loose yarn in. And then you're done. And if you're making the case, then we're going to go ahead and get our copper wire and you're just going to measure your copper wire around the circle. Once you've measured your copper wire around the circle, I um, cut off just a little bit extra so I can wrap the copper wire around. So I'm just going to wrap the copper wire around itself to form the circle. <clears throat> And now you can just place the copper wire right on the um, work. Actually, we are going to, we want it, this is the wrong side, so I'm going to place it on the wrong side. So it's behind the work. And then I'm going to go into the next stitch, go behind the copper wire. Bring up a loop, two loops on a hook, yarn over and go through both for a single crochet. And then I'm going to do a single crochet behind the copper wire and burying it as I work around the circle. So go ahead and finish doing single crochets all the way around until you've buried your copper wire. And you can see how my copper wire is now being hidden. So I'll just do one more stitch so you can see. Just go into the next stitch behind the copper wire. Bring up a loop, two loops on the hook, yarn over and go through both for a single crochet. So go ahead, finish doing single crochet and bury your copper wire all the way around until you get back to the yarn marker. Now, once you're back to the yarn marker, you can go ahead and do a slip stitch into that first stitch. Just yarn over and bring the yarn through both loops on your hook for a slip stitch. And then you're going to go ahead and chain three. One, two, three. And now we're going to do a double crochet into every stitch around. So you yarn over, go into the next stitch. Do a double crochet, and you're going to do one double crochet into every stitch all the way around back to the beginning. After you've completed one, two, three, four, five, six rows of the double crochet, and you've measured your circle for the top, you're going to place the copper wire right in between your loop and your crochet yarn, the yarn that you're using. And then you're going to go into the next stitch behind the copper wire. You're going to bring up a loop. You have two loops on the hook. You're going to yarn over and go through both for a single crochet. And then you're going to do that in every stitch around. Go behind the copper wire, bring up a loop, and do a single crochet. And you're just going to bury the copper wire all along the top rim of the basket. going to do a couple more so you can see how I'm doing it. I'm just burying that rim. You can't even see it anymore. It's going behind it. And then when you're done, come back and I'll show you how to slip stitch and join. Then once you've reached the beginning stitch, you're going to do a slip stitch into that stitch. Just bring the yarn through both loops on your hook and then you're going to finish off. Just bring your yarn through 
enough to bury into your work. And then you're just going to take and bury all of your loose yarn ends. So you just take your tapestry needle. And then you're going to take on the inside and just bury the loose yarn end on the, along the inside. So now you can see how it looks. The bottom rim helps to hold the bottom shape and then the top rim helps to hold the top shape. And then the lid sits nicely on top. And you can place your toilet paper inside and then the lid will just sit right on top of it. And you can leave it like this or if you want you can put flowers onto the top. And another design is you can sew the octopus right onto the top of it.